Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. Remember the Pound Puppies? Sure you do. Their marketing gimmick was far too clever to overlook. Buy one of our cute, sad little puppies or else they get the gas. Those lonely Pound Puppies really need to be rescued. It was a brilliant idea. And like most toys in the 1980s, if it was popular, it warranted a show. So we got the Pound Puppies show, which was just as dry for ideas as the executives who greenlighted it. I don't know, you got these dogs in a pound, but they get dogs out of the pound. There's this evil woman who runs it, but then there's this daughter who runs it, she tries to capture them even though they're somehow already in a pound, something about magic power that allows them to talk to humans. It was a mess. And just to make it even more confusing, they had a theatrical release that switched things up even more. That was Pound Puppies The Legend of Big Paw. Emotionally lagging and creatively retarded, the Pound Puppies movie is just as big a sellout as you would think. And considering how it was based on a show that was a sellout that was based on a toy that was a sellout, there's a lot of fucking selling out to be done here. So why should these characters have been Korean appetizers? Let's take a look. So it's a beautiful day in Whatever'sville, the sun is shining, the clouds are out, the cars stop in mid-dissolve. It's absolutely wonderful. And on this day, we see three dogs walking to the museum. Tia Kawapa, where are you taking us? All you said was it's a little surprise. Did you like surprises, Uncle Whopper? Oh boy, I think the director's kids wanted a cameo. Hey, watch out! Whoa, that could have been me. Thanks. That will be you if you don't start watching the lights and wait for the walk signal before you cross. Why, thanks, magic walking talking dog. Boy, this is the best high ever. It's a good thing we still have puppy power, or else I couldn't have talked to him. Yes, apparently there's this thing called puppy power, where dogs and humans can magically talk to one another. Not too late to get a refund, folks. Where did it come from anyways, Uncle Whopper? Wait till you hear this. It all started back in the Dark Ages, back in the days of the Knights. Wait a minute, what? Things were a lot different back then. Good and evil what? knights no. fought each other for the right to search the for the mystical sword about? Excalibur. Uh, no, sorry, I, I came in to watch Pound Puppies, the little dogs. Unfortunately, the evil Black Knight won. When did this become Spamalot, the animated series? Hi, I'm Pussy McPantaloon Britches, and I have no idea why we jump from talking dogs to Quest for Camelot's table scraps. Kind of weird. So the Black Knight, who's not wearing any black, chases after the boy and his dog. Now for the pleasure of finishing you. For dry red eyes, clear eyes is awesome. <laughs> So the boy just happens to stumble across the sword in the stone and... The Boon of Scone! Wait, the what? The Boon of Scone! There's a bone in the stone? Why would anyone put a bone in the stone? What's the point? What, was Merlin drunk when he came up with that little tidbit? And he who pulls the sword from the stone will be named King... <laughs> I just thought of something. <laughs> What if, now just hear me out, what if we put a bone in the stone? <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know why it's true. Everyone's gonna be like, why is there a bone in the stone? What's the point of that, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna be like, hey, that contained puppy power. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like, well, what the hell is puppy power? <laughs> well, I'll tell you in a second. <laughs> By the power of Greyhound! Oh, hell with this! I'm devoting my life to catching Smurfs! Yeah, sure scared him. You can talk! We, we can, can talk! talk. We, we found, found puppy, puppy power. power! So I guess they just declared it puppy power on the spot, and it seemed to stick. But I shall never rest until the bone of Scone is mine. And should I fail, the sons of the McNasty clan... McNasty? Really? That's his name? You know, you're sort of leaning his future towards evil when you call somebody that. I can't really see a daycare center called McNasty's. Some story, huh, kids? 
One thing I don't understand, Uncle Whopper. Oh, yeah. Just yeah, try to act like you give a shit, will you? Place. Which uh, brings me to another story about how we almost lost puppy power. Yes, because we can't keep track of where the fuck this movie's going, we cut to yet another flashback. This one takes place in the 50s. Okay. So we see our main characters from the original show. Cooler, Brad Eyes, Nose Marie, Howler, and Whopper. Yeah, look nothing like the original designs, do they? In fact, nothing else is like the original show if you grew up with it. The owners are different, the time period's different, even the personalities, though little there were, are different. But who cares? They're having such a rockin' good time. Let's go to the pound. Let's go to the pound. Let's go to the Wow, the pound looks awesome! I never knew all the fun I was missing out on all this time. <laughs> Come on, let's all go to the pound right now! Dance. You can hug him, you can pet him, but you better not forget him at the top. Fuck this, I'm getting a turtle. In commemoration of the thousand year anniversary of the Bone of Scone, we'll be holding an adoption bazaar at the Pound. Yeah, and everybody's invited to come over and adopt the Pound Puppy or Pound Purry of their choice. Wait, a Pound Purry? Did she really just call a cat a Pound Purry? What, did Pound Pussy just cause too much controversy? Someday one of Big Paw's descendants will guard the Bone of Scone again. It's like my great grandpuppy said to me. Us coolers are descendants from King Arthur's puppy. Dig a lot. Who wrote this? Just then, a nurse puppy comes in to let them all know the good news. It's time. It's time? It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Is it time? Actually, they're talking about a batch of puppies being born, which is so overblown it's making the nativity look phoned in. I love you. Where are they? Ah! Where are they? Look at them. They're just so cute. That guy is weird. You're right, Whopper. There's something odd about that man. No. What did you put? No. Young lady, the papers, please. Uh-oh. Look out for reflex. <laughs> I love you. I love you! What the I love hell? you! Yes, this interesting mental psychosis has a very strange reaction when he hears a bell. He runs around kissing people, saying that he loves them. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life! No rhyme or reason! Look out! I think this calls for another. Scary Snowball! Da! Ooh, fucking pound pervert! So after having sold the puppies to a man with razor sharp teeth, Whopper decides to follow him to see what his evil plan is. After a few minutes in my mean machine, these gentle puppies will be transformed into vicious guard dogs. This is a map of the museum. You enter here, then go through this corridor right to the bone. Then I have the power of the bone and my army of vicious attack dogs. I'll take over the pound, and then the country, and then the world! Of course! So Whopper goes and tells everybody what he saw, but nobody believes him. All right, Whopper, that's enough. It's good that you have an active imagination, but you have to learn to control it. Really? This is a movie that starts off with Excalibur talking puppies and a guy named McNasty. I think we've established that there's nothing far-fetched in this movie. So it's up to Whopper himself to stop the thugs from stealing the bone. This is gonna be a piece of cake. Hey, uh, don't mention food. I'm starving, all right? Hey, Lumpy, you know how we were talking about the other day how we're in every single solitary movie ever? The fat guy and the skinny guy who are both thugs? Yeah. Do you think that's a throwback to classic character development or just really shitty writing? I picked the latter. So the bone is broken in half, which means that all puppy power in the world is taken away. I saw Whopper run. What's going on? I can't understand Colette. Hey, I can't understand Tammy and Jeff. Well, that's odd. It's almost normal. 
So through a confusing chase scene, we see the thugs get half of the bone as well as Whopper and that mother dog. We gotta find the bone and put it back together if we want puppy power back. What if we c can't We have to. Or kids and puppies will never be able to talk again. It'll be like the way it was in the Dark Ages. Oh, oh no! no. What? We can... Oh, no! It would be like... pretty much how it is now! Ooh! Shh! Uh-oh. Listen, it's the Pupplings. I think they're saying my disappearing, sloppily animated nose is back at the pound. Oh, her babies are all alone! So with the mother gone, nobody can feed the pups. So they rip off 101 Dalmatians by howling to all the dogs trying to get information. Okay, a fat guy and a skinny guy are headed out of town on a motorcycle. Wait, wait, I've heard this one. The punchline is pineapple, right? We're gonna rescue him. Let's get cracking. Thanks, but uh, tracking's a dog's job. Well, I thought we were all friends. Boy, who'd have thought that Cooler was an anti cat height? <laughs> so McNasty plans to throw the pups into his mean machine that turns nice dogs into bad dogs as he sings about how evil and terrible he is. Control will be mine. All I need is that belt. I've got a plan in mind to put me on the throne. You know, doing a cappella with a man who's screaming and isn't really singing doesn't count as a song. You need more musical accompaniment than da 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 da. Now the world will be mine. My time has finally come. In the McNasty bloodline, I'm a son of a son of a gun. <laughs> ah! Oh, God. I never thought I would say this, but... Bring the rapping dog back. Well, the king of everything. Meanwhile, we cut to Cooler and the gang as they travel through the woods. As bad as the dialogue is, at least we don't have to listen to another crummy sub. Da! All in your mind. All in your mind. So as they travel through Hieronymus Box Hell, we see that Whopper and the mother escape and catch up with the gang. But they're captured again five minutes later, so this was completely pointless. I think we better go, Lumpy! Wait a minute! We just saw the mother get put away, now she's back with the group? What, was there a Stargate in that bag or something? Move! Come on, gang, let's nail them! So they have a little chase and end up in the mine shaft, where the pups are left hanging. Hey, stop looking at my can. Sorry. But luckily, Tone Loke's cat is there to save the day. Job for a dog, huh? We figured you'd need us sooner or later. I never thought I'd say this, but thanks, cat. You're all right. Oh, good. Cooler's able to put his deeply rooted cat prejudice aside for one day. Goody, goody. So McNasty puts the dogs in the mean machine, or rather a pointless conveyor belt that they easily could have rolled off of, as Cooler and the gang find themselves in even more trouble. Hey, I can't swim. Don't worry, it's quicksand. Uh, no, that's water. Are there any sh sharks in quicksand? It's so obviously water! It's blue, it's liquid, you can swim in it, it's water! Do your animators just have trouble drawing noses and sand? What's wrong with you? <laughs> It's... It's... Monty Python's a flying circus. Actually, it's Big Paw. Yes, he's in this movie too. I'm just a lonely puppy without a home and without any friends. But does he have a pointless song to sing? Big, 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 big pop, big, big, big pop, big, big, big pop, big, big, big <sighs> You know what I could use right now? I could use a shot of Tyler Durden's penis. I don't usually say that, but this just seems like the perfect movie to put it in. So when the snooty cat and the courageous dog with the celebrity voices meet for the first time in Reel 3, that's when you'll catch a flash of Tyler's contribution to the film. Big, 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 Big Paw, Big, Big, Big Paw. So the Pound Puppies and their new friend Big Paw approach the lair of our villain. <laughs> I'd better hide. What? You better hide? You're a giant! Why don't you try eating the fucking house? 
So the rest of them get caught and are about to be turned into evil puppies. But it turns out McNasty wants the cats to leave because he's allergic. This gives Cooler an idea. Get them out of here! Meow. Meow. Oh, and be sure to take the dog with the pot on his head and the broom up his ass. I... I don't think he's well. So as the others are turned to evil, Cooler and the cats escape to find Big Paw. Now what are they gonna do? Let's hide! Why do you keep hiding? You have a dog the size of a T-Rex! This movie should be over in like two seconds! Those guys make me mad. So they break into the museum as McNasty finally puts the bone back together. <laughs> Nothing happens. He just sort of declares himself king. Um, bad news guy, Britain has a parliament and America elects a president. This doesn't really mean anything. I mean, are you really expecting just to walk up to the White House and be like, LET ME IN AT ONCE! I AM YOUR NEW KING! Uh, no you're not, we got a president. But the bone, the bone! So through yet another cliché chase scene, we see the bones slip back and forth between everybody's hands. <laughs> but Cooler and Big Paw get trapped as they try to figure out how to turn the evil dogs back to good. Mama, I love you! My darlings! That's it! Saying I love you changes them back to normal. Well, that's a weird design flaw. McNasty, when making his mean machine, actually factored in that the only way to reverse it is saying I love you? How come love always seems to be the atom bomb in these movies? It always seems to be the answer. I love you! I love you! Drat! I've been foiled by the power of love! So they rush after McNasty to finally put everything right. What about the cops? We'll lose them too. Nothing can stop me now! That is, except for a small dog taking the wheel from me, a bigger dog grabbing onto the back, a few sloppy turns, and a confusing ride that leads me back to the museum where the police are waiting. Don't let it touch me! I don't want to be reversed! I don't want to be a good guy! <laughs> takes care of them. Yeah, but what about the scorn bone? So they find the bone, McNasty's now a McGoody, and the Pound Puppies have their adopting bazaar. Everyone sing and dance and celebrate! Oh, and I guess Whopper finishes his story. I see you brought some new friends to meet me. I'm sorry we didn't believe you, Uncle Whopper. Oh, that's all right. No harm done. The important thing is that with Big Paul guarding the bone, We'll never lose puppy power again! And thus puppy power stayed forever. Remember kids, you can talk to your dogs. If for some reason it doesn't work, there's something wrong with you. You should be ashamed of yourself and feel totally awful that you're unable to enjoy your dog. Sorry, we don't know what the fuck's wrong with you. Maybe you're just an idiot. What world created this? Aside from just making no sense, at all. The animation's choppy, the characters are forgettable, the songs are crap, it's just a stupid, stupid, stupid movie with virtually nothing redeemable about it whatsoever. So remember, the next time you see a cute, cuddly little puppy in the pound, let him rot! If not, you might end up with more bullshit like this. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it so you don't have to. Let's go to the pound. I love you!